everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my channel. I have had a lot of requests for a video on how to get started in historical costuming. I feel like it might be a kind of scary avenue for people who've never done it before to look at and be like, hey, I want to be able to do that too. So I've compiled a list of kind of basic information and resources. Hello to get you started <laughs> in historical costuming. And apparently Dora is going to help. This is Dora. I hope you're having a whole lot of fun with Cocovid. I know I am. There's so much content that's coming your way. So if you are watching this the weekend that it's coming out, uh, we are currently doing Cocovid, which is kind of a uh, an online replacement for those of us who are missing out on costume college this year due to coronavirus. I know I've been super excited to fill that void because Gosh, I love Costume College. I've been going since 2011 and it's just my annual event that I absolutely love. And so getting to watch everyone's videos is hopefully really, really fun. If you're watching this in the future, please go check out my playlist below where I have hopefully included every person's video. I think there's over 100, so hope I didn't miss any. Um, also, somewhere hidden in this video, there is going to be a badge because we're doing badges for every video that you watch. You can uh, scan your QR code or download the code and you can collect badges. Hopefully that's really fun. There's also um, people chatting over on Discord. There's Instagram hashtags. So I know this is coming out here on the last day of COVID, but do go check those out because there's still a few hours left of lots of activities. So. Here are some tips and information on how to get started in historical costuming. Now, I started my costuming journey quite some time ago, just as a little bit of background information for you. I started doing historical costuming specifically in uh, fall 2010, so <laughs> it's been a little while, and I started doing it through Ren Fairs. I had, I think in 2009, been to my first Ren Fair, and it was really, really exciting. And I was like, whoa, this is cool. I'd already started sewing before then. I did theatrical costuming before then, but I didn't know that people like got dressed up in historical costumes and went to events and stuff like that. I'd never been to a Ren Fair before 2009 and knew very, very little about them. So it was really exciting to me when I first heard that people even did that, but I kind of assumed at the time that it was just Ren Fairs. That's all that people did, right? So in 2010, after having been doing Ren Fairs for about a year or two at that point, and by doing, I mean just attending Ren Fairs in costume, I, A, I made my first like actual historical Ren Fair outfit as a not fair wear. Um, and so that was a doublet bodice out of velvet and cartridge pleated skirt and I never did make the sleeves, ran out of time for my first fair to make the sleeves. But I also found out about Dickens Fair that around that same time in 2010 and decided that I was going to make a Victorian outfit to wear to the Dickens Fair in the San Francisco Bay Area. And that kind of started me down this researching wormhole of the fact that other people wore costumes at various other times. I know the first two people that I found out about were Catherine as in Kashka the Cat and Kendra as in Demode Couture and I it just snowballed from there at the time I found Live Journal and then Costume College and everything and I attended my first Costume College in 2011. So now that you know a little bit of background information about how I got started in historical costuming, I want to tell you how today you can get started in historical costuming because there's not been a better time out there than to get started now. There are so many resources available for people who are new to sewing into costuming. And it's just amazing what you can find, particularly on YouTube. There's a few key points that I want you to keep in mind. And the first one is, as a historical costumer, do you want to make your own costumes or do you want to purchase your costumes? Now there's nothing wrong with either side. I would say that the majority of costumers that I know make their own costumes. And that way you can usually get better fit, you can make things more custom, there's a lot more creativity going on there just for you as a person, as a creative outlet. 
Um, and if that's your jam, then great. But if you're like, no, I just want to dress up pretty and go to parties or picnics or teas or whatever, then that is excellent as well. And there's plenty of ways out there for you to find costumes that are already made. So now primarily this video is going to be targeted to people who do want to sew their own costumes. But I did want to give a few resources for those of you who aren't interested in sewing your own costumes and would rather have them already done for you. So one good really easily accessible entry point is going to be the Gentleman's Emporium, Historical Emporium, etc. website um, that is out there. I will link to all of these links by the way in the description below. But that is a pretty good source for if you are wanting to do really primarily Victorian costuming and you want just kind of your ready-made um, intro level type stuff. It's not necessarily going to be historically accurate, but it's going to be easy, easily accessible. So do check that out. Now, if you want to go in at a, li a little bit of a higher price point and you want something that's going to be nicer, going to be made better, etc., there are lots of costumers out there who do make costumes for other people. I know one of my friends, Kristen, has the Black Orchid Atelier and, um, on Etsy, and she does lots of fantastic costumes. So again, I've linked her down below. Go check her out. She does costumes of all sorts of different eras, and she'll be a really great resource for you. There are also many uh, sellers like Jazz Townsend and others who have ready-made costumes for specific eras. So for them, it's for 18th century. Now, of course, every costume does need an underlayer and really a corset or stays, etc. It's going to be so, so important to having your outfit look good. So if you're not someone who wants to make your own corsetry, which it's challenging, so not something for a very beginner sewist, I would recommend going ahead and purchasing your corsetry needs. Now, if you're looking for just your absolute basic corsetry but still well made, still metal bones, etc. Go ahead and go for something like Orchard Corsets or CorsetStory.com, uh, both of whom have really inexpensive corsets. You're going to find them for under $100 normally and they'll be okay. They're not any specific era. They're not even a historical shape necessarily, but they will give you a decent base for while you're getting started. Now, of course, if you want to upgrade from that, highly, highly recommend Red Threaded for her corsets. Uh, in fact, if you've spent any time on YouTube or the internet at all, I'm sure you've probably heard of her. Her corsets are fantastic and um, they do come at a higher price point, that, but they're going to be significantly more historically accurate. She has specific styles for every sort of corset style that you might need. So definitely go check out Red Threaded. Now that we've gotten the ready-made costumes out of the way. The rest of this video is really going to be focused on people who want to sew their own costumes. So that's probably most of you is my guess. Now I know that this then will separate you into two further groups. There are those of you who already know how to sew which is fantastic and you have a huge advantage over everyone else. And then there are those of you who have never sewn before or maybe are very 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 basic sewers. So I'm going to go over a little bit for both of you, but this next section is going to be focused on people who are new to sewing and how the best way, in my opinion, to get started on your sewing and costuming journey. So the first thing is you want to start small. <laughs> costuming overall is a fairly large investment. It can be done in cheaper ways, and so if you're not willing to like drop 300 to 5,000 dollars on a sewing machine right away, don't. If you are just getting started in this, don't do that. Go out there and buy yourself a $100 sewing machine um, or you can even go to a thrift store and get a used sewing machine, though if you do that please make sure that they work first or you're going to give yourself a much bigger headache. For those of you who want to go drop $100 on a new sewing machine, I recommend getting a Brother sewing machine, definitely over a Singer. They're just better made and while it's still going to be plastic parts and stuff inside and it's not going to last you nearly as long as a more expensive machine, 
uh, it's still going to be a really good place to start and it will probably last you for at least the first couple years of your costuming journey. Once you have your machine, you want to start with some basics. I would recommend kind of doing a sampler. So you're going to want to make sure you practice your straight stitch, draw a line on a piece of fabric, make sure that you can sew on top of that line, and then do it again using the edge of your fabric as a guide. Make sure that you're keeping a straight line from the edge of your fabric. Also go ahead and try out at the very least a zigzag and a buttonhole. If you did get one of those $100 Brother sewing machines, they have a one step buttonhole, which is gonna save you a lot of time and frustration. So do test out your zigzag, your buttonhole, and you can also test out any of the other stitches that your machine has as well. Once you've completed your sampler, you're ready to start on very simple projects. So to get started with, don't do anything that requires fitting please just save yourself that trouble start yourself out with maybe a pillow a tote bag is a pretty good one and also an elastic waist skirt those are actually very very simple and really require no fitting other than kind of knowing your basic waist measurement and you can find patterns for all of those online or you can purchase simplicity patterns but um, all of those are going to be pretty easy projects that you can do without having any sewing experience. Once you've done any of those projects or all of those projects, you're ready to move on to something that has maybe slightly more fitting needed, and also you're ready to really start delving into patterns. So go out there and get yourself, I would recommend a simplicity pattern just because I find that those are the easiest, and go get your simplicity pattern for a skirt with a fitted waistband and an invisible zipper. This is going to give you the opportunity to fit just one place on your body, your waist, which is great because fitting is honestly by far, it's the hardest part of sewing. So you're just going to fit the one place on your body. You're also going to learn how to insert what, in my opinion, is the easiest zipper type to use. And in fact, I would say 99.9% .9 of the zippers I've ever used are invisible zippers. They're just way easier. So go ahead and, uh, and try out a pattern for a skirt with a fitted waistband. It's also going to give you the opportunity to learn how to use patterns. Uh, this is highly, highly important in my opinion because using patterns is really your first main step level. It's so much harder to try to draft your own patterns or to try to pattern out of books, diagrams and books, and you're gonna get there eventually, but don't throw that on yourself right away. It's just gonna make your life harder. Once you've completed your fitted skirt project, you are ready to start on your historical projects. Again, you're gonna to wanna to get some patterns. I recommend starting with your undergarments. Make something like a simple shift or chemise. It's a really basic shape, and in fact, you might even find it maybe easier than the skirt with the zipper, um, but it is going to make you do things like pay attention to hems and possibly sleeves, depending on what kind of pattern you use. So it's gonna give you a little bit more challenge in there. You're also going to want to make a petticoat. Now I recommend for new sewers to start with the Regency period. Regency is just a, a pretty simple period to start with. The gowns are pretty simple. The underlayers are pretty simple. You can accessorize with things that are probably all in your own wardrobe besides maybe a hat. And everything is just nice and easy and good to get into the flow. There's also Regency events all over the place because everyone really loves Jane Austen. So in most places, you're gonna find a Regency event before you find an event of another era. With Regency, besides the chemise, you are also going to want an under petticoat of some sort. Uh, that can be either one that's called a bodiced petticoat where it has a part that goes over the bust, or it can be a petticoat that literally stops just under the bust and has straps. Um, and that's a very simple garment to make. I don't know if there are simplicity patterns out for that sort of thing, but there are definitely diagrams online and because it's really a rectangle for an, the under bodice kind, um, it's really quite simple. So that is what I recommend starting with. Now the one thing about the Regency era is that if you do go for a long line corset, those are actually very challenging to make. Even considering various types of corsetry, Regency corsets are one of the more challenging. So if you are not ready for a long line Regency corset, I would recommend either trying a shorter one, which are easier, but still a little challenging, purchasing one from someplace like Red Threaded, 
or even just going with a push-up bra. It's not something that I would recommend you stick with <laughs> um, for later in your historical costuming journey, but as you're starting out, just go with a push-up bra and it's gonna give you a similar-ish look unless you're particularly fluffy like I am. Once you have made your undergarments for the Regency period, you are ready to start on the dress, and that is so, so exciting because everyone knows that it's the outer layers that really are the most fun and the most fun to wear and everything like that as well. So you're ready to start on your dress. There are Simplicity and Butterick patterns out there for Regency dresses. Feel free to try those. The one caveat there is that the Simplicity and Butterick type patterns may have in historically inaccurate things like zippers in them, and they may also have way too much ease for, a, for what you really want. So do be careful there. You can also go and get patterns for Regency from places like Laughing Moon would be a good resource for Regency. So um, really, it's it depends. Uh, if you go with like a Laughing Moon or if you're doing Victorian, a, a truly Victorian type pattern, the instructions are going to generally assume that you know a little bit more about sewing, but also the patterns are probably going to be better. So your mileage may vary, but uh, definitely check out some different pattern resources. Again, with like your skirt pattern, start with Simplicity, but then you're ready to move on from Simplicity and Butterick to things like Laughing Moon or Truly Victorian. One of the other things that makes Regency a really great place to start with your journey is the fact that pretty much you can make everything out of cotton. Cotton, in my opinion, is the easiest fabric to work with. Get yourself kind of like a muslin weight cotton fabric, which you can get really easily from Joann's or your whatever your local fabric store is. It's pretty inexpensive. You can even go to the thrift store, get cotton bed sheets, and make your Regency wardrobe out of that. In fact, my second ever historical, wasn't very great, but you know, it's some place to start, project that I did way back in high school was actually a Regency dress from a, I believe, Butterick pattern. And I made that out of some old bed sheets and pillowcases that we had laying around the house. Again, great place to start. As you proceed in your costuming journey, you're going to find that those are really practice projects and you're gonna get better and better with every project. So don't worry about going out there and spending a lot of money on your first project. Please don't go buy $20 a yard silk anything like that. Start with cotton, start with sheets, things that you have around the house. Make life easier and cheaper on yourself while you're still starting out on your journey. Once you have completed your Regency outfit, it's going to be, first off, so exciting. So I'm so thrilled for you just in advance that you're going to be completing your first full outfit of any era. Uh, but once you've completed your Regency outfit, if you do decide to go with Regency first, you're really ready to move on to any other era. Again, in my opinion, Regency is the simplest, so feel free at that point to go 18th century, Victorian, Tudor, the world is your oyster. You can choose anything you want. And again, the more that you practice, the easier it's going to be. Once you have patterns down, and by down I mean once you can kind of examine, yes, these are the shapes that it needs to be. Yes, these are the measurements that it will need to equal. You can really start using pattern diagrams in books too. If you've been on my channel at all before, you know that I love period costume for stage and screen. I think the diagrams in there are just fantastic, so highly recommend that. Janet Arnold also has some great diagrams, and anything that's on a gridded diagram like that, you can scale up to be huge size and then you can learn once you've done some projects you can learn where those shapes need to be altered to get to your specific size and that's a whole other ball of wax video so I'm not going deeper into that but again I would say start with patterns learn what shapes look like then go with gridded patterns just make your life easier that's the whole idea getting into historical costuming and getting into sewing it shouldn't be that much of a challenge because then you might not do it. And believe me, as a customer who's been doing this for a while, we absolutely love baby costumers. So we want as many people in this hobby as there possibly can be, because that means we're gonna have events with more and more people in them and it's gonna be more and more fun. So please don't feel daunted. That's the biggest thing, is don't let your own fear stop you from getting into historical costuming, from getting into sewing, anything like that. Your first projects, they might be terrible, and that's just how 
the world works, everything needs practice. So please don't worry, no one is going to judge you. Again, we're gonna be welcoming you with open arms saying, hey baby customer, come here. Let me you know, show you the ways, let's have a picnic, let's have some tea. So please don't be afraid of anything like that. Don't let your fear or worries stop you. Just dive in and join us in historical costuming. Now, of course, that was all really for people who have never sewn before. If you have already sewn, then you are at a huge, huge advantage and you can really just kind of start wherever you like, especially if you already know how to use patterns, if you know how to fit in particular, because again, fitting is the hardest part. But if you know how to do that already, you can choose your favorite era, choose your favorite pattern, like a truly Victorian or a Laughing Moon pattern, and dive right in to making whatever garment you like. Just remember that everyone starts somewhere. Again, I mean, when I look at my projects from my early years of sewing, some of which I still have and a few of which I still wear, I still cringe. <laughs> um, in particular, I've got a Hogwarts robe that was one of my very first projects that again, I still have and I still wear. And I look at that thing and go, what was I thinking? But then when I look at that, which was 2006 and no, 2005, and even comparing that to like five years later when I was starting to work on that um, doublet gown or on my first Victorian dress, even the growth there is just humongous. Heck, even the growth from my really pretty terrible Queen of Hearts dress that I made off of a Simplicity Pirates of the Caribbean gown pattern in like 2008, I think. Even that versus two years later in 2010, world of difference. So again, the more that you practice, the more you're going to grow and you're going to get so comfortable with sewing. But you know what? There's always going to be hurdles. The dress that I'm working on right now, which is my Elsa dress, has been just mind numbing in so many ways. Things that I just didn't know how to do and felt that at this point in my growth, I should have known how to do. But you know what? It doesn't matter because with every project you are going to learn and you are going to grow. And that's the wonderful thing about being human is that you should always be growing. You found the badge. Scan the QR code or use the numerical claim code to claim your badge. Additional instructions can be found in the description box below. So I hope that was really helpful. I know that was just kind of me rambling and blabbering on for a bit, but I just wanted to really kind of show you that it's not scary to get into historical costuming. It takes practice and it takes a little effort, but it shouldn't be scary at all. So for any of you who are new to costuming or to sewing, please, please, if you have questions, please ask them and I would be happy to answer them both here in the comments or you could go over on Instagram, send me a DM. I'm at Lady Rebecca Fashions over on Instagram. So please just throw your comments at me and your questions at me. I really, really wanna help you with your journey. And if you did like this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a video. I post a specific topic video once a week and I've started doing a sewing vlog on here as well. But I do post every day over on Instagram. So please go ahead and follow me on Instagram if you're not already. That's again, at Lady Rebecca Fashions. Again, just comment or throw any questions at me that you might have. I so want to help you with your journey. I really hope this video was helpful as well. And I hope that you have a wonderful day. Enjoy your first few projects and happy sewing. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, great. Now I'm covered in fur. Dora! Everywhere! I think it's in my mouth. Lion! Lion, you're jingling. Come on! Good boy.